I'm going to do a video today about my personal journey with VO2 Max. I work out a little bit and I got interested in it maybe about six months ago. And I've got a uh, an Apple Watch. I've got a Polar H10 heart rate monitor, which talks to my iPhone, an app on my iPhone. Um, and over the last little while, I've been doing some certain measurements and stuff like that. I found a couple of really interesting things. So thought I'd give you my perspective on it. I'm 58 years old. Apparently, VO2 Max is very good for your long-term health. Um, so I thought I'd do a video about it. Let's go. So I discovered VO2 Max about six months ago. And what it is, it's really a number that you really could equate generally to your fitness, your cardiovascular fitness. And it's, uh, I think there's data that shows that about 30 Two or thirty-three percent of people globally die of cardiovascular disease, and that's of all age groups. And as you get older, so if you get sort of after fifty, it means that uh, it's almost upwards of sixty uh, percent of people die of cardiovascular disease. So it is the biggest cause of death and mortality um, across all of uh, populations across the whole planet, across men, women, doesn't matter. Um, and as a result, VO2 max uh, being a numerical measure, it's something that you can actually measure. And hopefully, if you've got a good number or if you plan to increase your number, um, that's something that hopefully will correlate generally to your uh, well-being. So what VO2 max, the V is volume and the O2 is oxygen. And it's about the amount of oxygen your body can take in. And as I said, there's lots of videos out there that go into far more depth on the um, on the subject. And I listened to a couple of podcasts, uh, Dr. Peter Atia um, and many others. He's had guests on and I've gone down rabbit holes listening to a, a lot of stuff like that. And the data is pretty clear that it's very good for your health. So oh, I thought I would measure my VO2 max. So let's talk about how to measure VO2 max with just general day-to-day -day devices. Now, as I said earlier, I have a uh, an Apple Watch. That's a Series uh, 8, and it's up to date with its software. And I have a Polar Heart Rate Monitor, which has a um, so like a chest strap that goes around your chest. Um, it has two. It has a rubber contact on it that attaches to your skin and little device with Bluetooth that talks to my phone and there's an app on my phone that records my heart rate. Um, now, so since I've been doing the investigation about how the Apple Watch uh, measures it, it appears that everything that goes into the Apple Watch, now, if you use it like me and it's just your regular watch that you use every day, it measures your heart rate every few minutes, uh, just generally. Um, and I use the workout uh, function on the app when I'm doing a workout. And I've also got my accurate data in there, my age, my weight. Um, it knows a fair bit more about me. Um, interestingly enough is that the Apple Watch and my Polar heart rate monitor are pretty similar in how they measure my VO2 max, which is interesting. But what prompted me to do this video in the first place and something that came up is I let my heart rate monitor to a friend now my friend uh, is younger than me and not quite as fit as me because they don't go to the gym as often as I do and um, I it asks before it does the fitness test it asks things like what's your age uh, how many times do you work out and then it asks you to sit down and the polar heart rate monitor gets you to do a test when your uh, your heart rate is at its lowest, so resting heart rate. And it did that, um, and the reading and the person who did the test took that away. And I didn't understand the depth of how these uh, devices did it at that point in time. And I thought, oh, okay, that's that's your heart, that's your VO2 max. That's something that you can take away. Um, then following day, I put the heart rate monitor in. I left the settings of my younger friend within the app and I did a heart rate test. And of course, it was completely different. So rather than someone like me who works out maybe six, seven days a week, uh, this person put in there that they don't work out at all. 
um, and their age is much younger than mine as well. So I did the test without changing those uh, core pieces of data and of course the <laughs> settings was far different. Um, so I went down that rabbit hole of starting to look into how these devices measures your heart rate and your VO2 max and how they did it. And one thing that was really clear with all of these devices is the accuracy of how you input the data is really important for accuracy um, because they use all of these different proxies to make estimates of your heart rate. The second thing which was really interesting is that I did a heart rate test with my Polar um, and my general resting heart rate is about 55, give or take. But if I've had a cup of coffee and I've got a pretty good coffee machine and I, I like a reasonably strong coffee, um, it uh, I had a coffee and my resting heart rate was somewhere between sort of 68 to 70. And I got a, again, I got a different uh, VO2 max test. So that made me think uh, interesting uh, uh, things as well. And I've also noticed now that I've been sort of looking into it that if I have a poorer night's sleep, my resting heart rate is slightly different. Um, and this sort of made me think that this is quite an interesting thing. Now, VO2 max, if you want to measure it properly, you can go to a lab, they put a face mask on you and they actually measure the air exchange. They get you on a treadmill or get you to, to exert yourself and they can actually measure it. And that's probably the best accurate test. But what this video is about and what I wanted to try to communicate was exactly how these uh, watches and wearables, because there's a Garmin and there are many other fitness devices you can wear, and they loosely correlate to what your true VO2 max is. Um, so one thing I saw in one video was that these two guys did their VO2 max on their Apple device and then they went into a lab and, and it wasn't bad. It was I think that there was a two points different and um, there are graphs on the internet where you can see your age bracket and what is uh, poor, medium, and good VO2 max for your different stages of life, whether you're female or male. Um, but it showed me that these devices uh, need to have a certain set of circumstances. So I even went further down the rabbit hole and I did uh, a thing that they call a Cooper test, which is where you run for 12 minutes as fast as you can um, and uh, see how far you can run and you put your distance into a calculator and it gives you your vo2 max um now i did it in a treadmill and i put a one percent incline which is what the internet told me to do and mind you i saw another one that said maybe it should be a little bit more of an incline but this is the internet for you um but when i put that result into the calculator it said i had a vo2 max over 50 which is pretty good for my age at 58 um whereas my apple watch is telling me i'm about a 48 which is still pretty good for my age but i train quite a bit and i uh do interval training so i do the thing they call hit which is high interval high intensity interval training um and what i found is and what i want to try to get through this video is be very careful about how you measure things and make sure you put accurate data within your um, your apps that you use and then maybe measure it over a, a bunch of time as well because what I've also read about the Apple Watch specifically because you do wear it all day, it does, um, you know, uh, it, it measures you when you're, you know, working or when you're on the train or watching telly um, where the Polar Heart Rate Monitor does not. It then has this uh, data over long, long periods of time. And as a result, it's actually got a better way of measuring it because I've read that the, the way that the algorithm and the people who did the mathematics with this, they do use all of that data to come up to your VO2 max. So in closing, uh, be careful about the measuring devices. If you want to get a proper measure of your VO2 max, go to a... Uh, proper lab uh, but if you're using either a wearable 
uh, like a heart rate monitor on your chest or on your wrist like the Apple Watch, um, my advice to you would be measure multiple times. Make sure you're accurate with your um, input. Uh, and um, if you want to try to improve your VO2 max, uh, high interval training, a lot of zone two training, and there are many, many other resources on the internet about how to train and all that sort of stuff. That's not about it. This is more about my personal journey and some of the stuff I found. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, bye for now.